While tornadoes may form in any month of the year, they are more likely to spawn in the spring and early summer months when opposing air masses are more common in the mid-latitudes. Fall too is a season of weather transition, especially in the more humid southeastern portion of the country. Even the rugged uplands of the Ozarks and southern Appalachia are not immune from autumn tornadoes. A vortex, generally regarded by the National Weather Service as a powerful F3, touched down on November 11, 2002 in Mossy Grove, a small community in Morgan County, Tennessee. The tornado left seven people dead. On that Veterans Day weekend, 75 other tornadoes wreaked havoc across a significant portion of the eastern United States. From the deep south through Tennessee and into much of Ohio, 76 tornadoes ranging from F2s to F4s left their marks on the American cultural landscape. Today on the Vantage Point, we're going to take a look at that outbreak, especially the Mossy Grove event. Like the Tri-State Tornado of 1925, this outbreak did not occur over the Great Plains at Dorothy's, Kansas. I hope you'll join me. Situated five miles from the small town of Wartburg, Tennessee, Mossy Grove is a bedroom community nestled in a valley on the eastern escarpment of the Cumberland Plateau in Upper East Tennessee. Most of the residents who live in Mossy Grove work for the state penitentiary at Peach Ross, Morgan County Schools, or they commute some 20 miles into Oak Ridge. Being situated in a valley, Mossy Grove is in a seemingly safe natural place. The Mossy Grove tornado was a lone F3 vortex that plummeted from the sky above the eastern escarpment of the Cumberland Plateau. The tornado of November 11, 2011 that killed seven people in that Morgan County village was just one of many, or 76, other tornadoes altogether that played havoc with the lives of people, plants, and animals on that mid-autumn Sunday. While fall tornadoes are less common than their spring counterparts, they are nevertheless products of major frontal and supercell activity. Interestingly, these autonomous cyclones are more likely to form over the humid southeastern United States than they are over the traditional tornado valley, or alley. They often produce multiple vortexes. The 76 tornadoes that touched down on Veterans Day weekend of 2002 left paths of destruction in seven states all of them, except for Arkansas, were east of the Mississippi River. This outbreak was the largest single outbreak of tornadoes since November 1992, another fall event, when 94 tornadoes touched down in 13 states. Again, it's important to stress the fact that autumn tornadoes are more likely to form in the humid southeastern portion of the country while the Great Plains and the Midwestern states are more likely to be hit by tornadoes in the spring and early summer months. As I mentioned earlier, Mossy Grove and the outbreaks of November 11, 2002 deserve attention for several reasons. Being situated on the eastern escarpment of the Cumberland Plateau, Mossy Grove's location does not suggest that the village is in harm's way from a tornado. The ridges, which are actually the tops of the locally dissected plateau that lay to the west, north, and south of Mossy Grove, rise several hundred feet above the community. Consequently, high-velocity winds are rare in Mossy Grove. The uplands to the west and north were thought to serve as orographic barriers that shelter it from most of those winds. The tornado also occurred in the dark of night. Many people were at church or getting ready for bed and a new week of work or school when the tornado struck. Fortunately, the National Weather Service had issued a tornado watch and then a warning, so most residents were aware of the damn danger, but not everybody, of course. Without a doubt, the staff at the National Weather Service saved dozens, if not hundreds of lives that night, that weekend even. The National Weather Service office in Morristown, Tennessee issued a severe thunderstorm warning for Morgan and Scott counties at 6.18 p.m. At 6.20 p.m., radar reflectivity images revealed juvenile stages of a hook echo, which is a signature of a tornado. A hook echo on the back edge of a storm suggests that rain is being wrapped around a vortex. 
Storm relative velocity images at that time also indicated rotation. Storm relative velocity imagery shows that the velocity of the wind minus the motion of the storm when they produce certain patterns, it can be inferred that there is rotation and hence a vortex. The National Weather Service at Morristown issued a tornado warning at 6.26 p.m. In just eight minutes, the warning rose from a severe thunderstorm to a tornado. At around 8.30, an F3 with winds estimated to be 175 miles per hour touched down west of Mossy Grove. It traveled northeast for 8.3 miles and dissipated near Joyner, Tennessee. Sadly, four of the victims were killed as they tried to escape from its path in an automobile. Apparently, the driver was blinded by the intense rainfall and didn't see the vortex, or it simply caught up with them. The supercell then continued eastward for 20 miles and an F2 vortex touched down at around 9 p.m. in Frost Bottom, a rural community in a narrow valley near the town of Bryceville, Tennessee. In its wake, the Mossy Grove F3 left seven residents dead and an uncertain number of people injured. Not everyone heard the warnings, according to local residents Sarah and Stephen Williamson. An unrealistically large number of people claimed injuries from the twister. Apparently, the lure of publicity via news outlets led some people to make unsubstantiated claims of being tossed about or otherwise injured by winds and debris. At that time, Williamson, Stephen that is, was 10 years old, and on that Sunday evening he was visiting his grandparents who live in Mossy Grove. According to Williamson, the tornado tore a path of destruction through Mossy Grove about 100 yards from his grandparents' home. The young man recalled that the lights in his grandparents' home were flickering on and off as the sounds of heavy rain and then damaging hail pelted the home's metal roof. Although there are no train tracks in Mossy Grove, he heard a loud train, a loud train in the distance. According to Stephen Williamson, it sounded as if it were coming down the mountain and swooped behind Mossy Grove along Jones Road. That's where the damage was most severe. It seemed like I could hear the train for a few minutes, Stephen said. Among the documented survivors was a 12-year-old boy named Quentin Woody. He was home alone and was apparently taking a shower when the tornado approached his Jones Road home. As the boy exited the shower, the tornado tore through his house and tossed him into a tree, breaking his left ankle and right forearm, but he did recover. While residents of Mossy Grove and Bryceville, Tennessee, that's up in Anderson County, contended with the encounter of the, with the tornadoes, the National Weather Service office in Calera, Alabama had issued numerous tornado alerts for 11 hours leading up to the outbreak. In Van Wert, Ohio, tornado sirens sounded 15 minutes before the first of four vortexes ripped through the small city and the surrounding countryside. The Van Wert outbreak produced winds in excess of 200 miles per hour, achieving the destructive rating of an F4, could be an EF5. Broadcasted warnings and tornado sirens prompted an alert theater manager to send about 50 matinee moviegoers to interior restrooms. The manager's prompt actions saved dozens of lives because at 3.25 p.m., a powerful tornado hurled three cars into the front row seats while ripping apart the exterior portions of the theater complex. While there are justifiable reasons to see the American Great Plains as our traditional tornado alley, the Veterans Day outbreak of 2002, along with dozens of other outbreaks since the 17th century, should make us realize that there are two tornado alleys in the United States. The eastern alley is more dangerous in the fall months than the alley that forms over Dorothy's Kansas. Well, I hope you got something out of today's show and will like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time here on The Vantage Point.